America, it was literally a land of opportunity. The Jews came with their talents, with their brains, with the willingness to work all kind of hours. And actually, they fell in love with America. It was really true, undiluted love. And they took to America, each according to his talents, and they worked. And uh, you can say they became drunk with America. To drop their ethnic ways and become Americans. Who ever heard of a woman that didn't light candles Friday night? There was no such thing as a non-kosher home. Everybody bought in a kosher butcher. It's very interesting. In whole Brownsville, in, in East New York, there were 57,000 Jews. There were not stores that sold non-kosher food. You couldn't go into a, to a luncheonette and get a ham sandwich. It was impossible. There was no such a thing. Uh, the whole New York was permeated with, with, with Judaism. Macy's and Gimbel's and Orbach's and S. Klein were closed on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Even during the year, on the holidays, on Pesach, on Sukkot, uh, Jews came to the synagogue. But for the rest of the year, during the weekdays of the year, they were totally absorbed in the pursuit of building their fortunes. And, and their children were the sacrifices, you know. They were here with the with a tremendous decision to give their children what they didn't have, you know. Every father and mother wanted their children to be a doctor and a lawyer and a professional and wanted them to go to universities. It was a, it was unheard of in our section for somebody who didn't go to a college. It was unheard of. Judaism is a spark, is a fire. It has to burn, you understand? The one stop fire, one stop coal lights on, you get lost in the local scenery, and that's what happened to the second generation. I mean, but there was no malice intended. In fact, they, even the second generation had a love and a warmth for everything that was Jewish, Jewish food and Jewish music and, and the Yiddish theater. All of these things existed. They thought that they're going to exist forever, and this is going to be a substitute for the fire of Judaism, but it was a very poor substitute. It became erased as the years went by. The spirit of liberalism permeated the whole Jewish community. But as I think there was a professor in Columbia, Columbia Lionel Trilling, he once said they teach the children, the students, to be open-minded. They get so open-minded that their brains fall out. And the children began to absorb, you know, the instant pleasure. Everything was permitted and everything was allowed. And they began to drink, you know, of the good life, the dolce vita, the good life. And once you absorb this and once you have this, you're left high and dry. You know, the soul is not satisfied with that. Inside, in the core of their being, they felt an emptiness. They felt a, a rootlessness. They had no roots. They had nothing to live with. You cannot, by, by leading a sensual life, you cannot satisfy the soul. The soul remains unsatisfied. And this uh, began the road back for many hundreds and thousands of Jewish boys and girls.